about to leave already packing come with me i'm not really asking we'll get away to a place where we don't know about to see the world in action what we can be life with no distractions we'll get away this is what we waited for Evening, everyone. It's Jim here. Welcome to our fifth in this series of live streams where we're looking at uh, the individual assessment foci for business, PTEC Business National Unit 2, developing a marketing campaign. And tonight we're taking a look at two of the assessment foci, focuses, foci uh, from uh, Activity 2. So, yesterday, if you joined us live, we were looking at the marketing mix, by far the most important um, activity or most important focus of the whole Unit 2 exam, which is worth 20 marks tonight. We're looking at AF6 and AF7, the budget and campaign timetable respectively, worth a total of 12 marks, with the budget being twice as important, worth 8 marks. So this is about 25-30 minute session. We'll do a little bit of revision. We'll look at what the examiners have said they're looking for to try and maximise the marks that you get in these two parts. And, uh, well, then we'll get have the weekend free, Come back again next Monday. If you can join me, we're going to be looking at a brand new research pack, an unseen research pack, just to work our way. It's a bit of a warm-up for Unit 2 next week. Good to see everyone uh, here on the live chat. Welcome to you, in particular, Northampton College. As always, regular attendees on the live chat. The Blue School, I believe, are with us in the house, along with a bunch of others. And uh, most importantly, Kira's here. And we couldn't possibly do this session without Kira. So please, as we go... Uh, I've got a couple of re revision activities for you, so please do use the live chat for that or to ask any questions as we go. And, uh, well, why don't we make a bit of a start on this? I've got lots of buttons to push here, including it, some some new buttons, a new a new, a new sound effect pad uh, button here. I've got, for example, if I press this one, uh, it means that someone's done well with a good contribution. If I press this one, maybe not so well. You get the idea. Anyway, let's uh, see what we're going to cover tonight. We're going to have a look at AF6, AF7. And uh, 
As I mentioned, what the examiners have said, a couple of worked examples from our favourite case study, Decreal Gear, just to finish the task off. And uh, as we go through the session, a couple of revision activities. Good stuff. And maybe even some more sound effects. Shall we start with a little warm-up activity? Uh, MH is asking, what is AF7? AF7 is the campaign timetable. AF6 is the campaign budget. So here we go. Uh, let's just do a quick game of higher or lower. So this is over to you in the live chat. I've picked out five campaign costs, five bits of marketing promotion campaigns, and I've got a cost for each of them. And all you have to do is to tell me whether the next cost is higher or lower than the previous one. You'll soon get the idea. If I tell you that our starting point is printing 25,000 flyers on one side only, A5 size, that's half an A4. In the live chat, what do you think that would cost me from our local printer here? They've given me the quote. What would it cost me to print 25,000 A5 sized flyers, not easy to say, on one side? Let's see who gets closest. Type it to the live chat. Good exercise this, just for getting a feel for realistic costings for promotional activities. Uh, we've got uh, 250 in the house was the first entry. Anyone want to go higher or lower than that? Maybe much higher, maybe much lower, or about the same. What do we think? Okay. Uh, well, it's the only entry in the live chat, despite the fact there's lots of you. Oh, wait a minute. It's all coming in now. Kira's gone 500. Gerbani's 579. Decreal Gear, the official account for Decreal Gear, going £200. Should we have a look? Well, according to my printer next door, around the corner, £221. He's going to quote me for that. 25,000 flyers. Okay, so the next one, is it higher or lower? Do you get the idea? So the next one is, would it be more or less than 221 to run one 30-second advert on a radio station breakfast show at 9 o'clock in the morning with 100,000 listeners? Is that more or less, higher or lower? So all you have to do in the live chat is go higher or lower. If you want to guess what it is, please put your guess in as well. Kira's saying way higher. Way higher. Jay is agreeing with you. Zenki too. Lots of people having to go at this. Great to see you. Big numbers tonight. A few more seconds. And for those of you who said way higher, let's have a look. It's actually lower. It's actually lower. Radio advertising can be a very cost-effective way of reaching large numbers of people, presuming that they're listening to it. As a rough rule of thumb, and it does vary by station, roughly it's £2 per 1,000 listeners per advert, roughly. So in that case, 100,000 listeners, that's 100 times by £2, £200. So for just running one 30-second advert, if you missed it, you missed it. Next one. Hiring a stall at a popular farmer's market for the day. Now, I've been in touch with our local town. So it's a farming town and uh, found out what it costs to hire a stall at next week's farmer's market. What do you think? Higher or lower than 200? Sometimes you get in the unit two, you get a uh, uh, maybe a business making food, maybe biscuits, I don't know, all kinds of different <laughs> food and drink products. And uh, one of the options might be to uh, to hire a stall to get some customers to try it. Uh, Jess going higher. Ayman's going higher. Faye saying higher. Well, for those of you who said higher, <laughs> I don't think you're right. 50 to 75 pounds is what I was quoted to hire the stall. Obviously, you get some extra wider costs of actually sort of, you know, transporting to the farmer's market, displaying your product, perhaps promoting the fact that you're going to be there. But the actual hire of the stall, 50 to 70 pounds. Good stuff. And uh, let's uh, try the next one. Running a 30-second advert on Lorraine. I don't know whether you watch that show on ITV1 in the morning, 9.30. So one 30-second advert. Higher or lower? And if you want to have a go and guess the uh, the amount, what do you think? Kira's saying, now that's way higher. Having said it was way higher the previous two times. What do you think? Uh, Lambeuf is going higher. Zabhead, Gurbani, MH, all going higher. If you said higher this time. Oh, correct. I'm glad I bought this uh, sound pad. It would cost you in the region of three and a half to four thousand three hundred pounds. It might be slightly more than that. Might be slightly less, depending on what you negotiate with the buying team at ITV. Roughly three and a half four thousand pounds per thirty second advert. 
Good stuff. And uh, lastly, higher or lower, renting a 24 meter or square meter booth, so five meters by five meters, at a popular trade exhibition. Now, typically that's for two or three days. So that's included in the, that's renting that space for the exhibition, let's say over three days. What do we think, higher or lower? 25 square meters. What do we think? Hard one, this one. It's per, yeah, it's per exhibition. So let's say the exhibition lasts for three days. You get, you get charged per square meter for the, ex, for the duration of the exhibition. MH is going higher, Zenki going higher, Decreel going lower, Kira seeing lower or near the same. Let's have a look. It is almost, well, 10,000 pounds, eight to 9,000 to 12,000 pounds typically. And that's just the rental cost. That's just hiring the space. The costs typically, the costs of an exhibition are the total costs, including wider costs of an exhibition are typically, rule of thumb, three times the space rental cost. So if you rented a 25 square meter booth for say three days at the exhibition, let's say it's 10,000 pounds, you probably expect to spend in total 30,000 pounds if you include the wider costs. And uh, and I've done that, and it's uh, it's often it's actually it's a complete waste of money in most in most situations. So look out for that if there's an option to uh, in your case study next week to attend an exhibition. Very expensive. You need to be absolutely sure it's going to work for you. Good stuff. Don't worry if you didn't get that right or wrong. Uh, round of applause. Revenue had a, had a go. It's just an example of the kind of things we're talking about when we talk about budgeted costs. So a quick reminder from last night. We are talking here about activity two. It's the plan. It's the detail, isn't it? So yesterday, AF5, 20 marks, we were looking at how you apply the detail of the seven Ps. That's the four Ps plus the three other ones to your case study business. So detail, application, justification. 20 marks, definitely worth you know, 35, 40 minutes of writing. Every mark matters. Lots of marks to be awarded. Well worth if you've not watched that session going back and having a quick look. For activity two, we have two more assessment focuses uh, that we're looking at tonight. Activ AF6, which is the budget, and AF7, the timescale, four marks. Now, we're not looking at presentation because there's no point. You simply get marks for whether your two files are your two files for activity one, activity two are well presented. Most students get those marks or certainly get to two or three out of four. And uh, therefore, these are our last two AFs to look at. Uh, budget, eight marks, time scale four. So the first thing to say is looking at that allocation of marks there, by a distance, the most important part to spend your time on is the marketing mix in activity two. And then the next most important is the budget. If you're running out of time, you're better off just doing a very, very quick, rough and ready time scale, get a mark, but then making sure you've had a good attempt at the marketing mix and a good attempt at the budget. Okay, so <laughs> let's... Look at budgeting to start with. Now, so what do we need for AF6? Well, eight marks are going. The examiner is looking for you to demonstrate an understanding of what we've just done there, the costs of undertaking your promotional activities. And don't forget in your campaign, you're typically going to pick two or three promotional activities to support your proposed marketing message and your proposed plan and the option that you've chosen. So the key here is detail again. But also the examiners really made it clear that they want you to consider not just the cost of, say, I don't know, emailing people or running a, an online advertising campaign, but the wider costs, the other costs that might be involved. Not everything, but make sure you include some wider costs, ideally in context, but also as far as possible with realistic costings. Now, don't forget in the research pack, you get given that nice menu of possible, a menu of possible promotional activities. You can use those if you wish, but you don't have to. You can use your own marketing ideas, promotional ideas. You can use your own costings. So there's no expectation that you have to use what's provided for you in that nice menu of promotional activities. And as I've said in previous sessions, I quite like to have my own two or three evergreen go-to campaigns that I know I'm going to be able to apply rather than worrying too much about what the examiner's included in that, uh, that list. So, uh, Chim is asking, is breaking down the cost important every time? Well, as we'll see, it is important to show some detail, including some calculations, but then it's also important to show some wider costs. With that in mind, 
I mentioned wider cost. We loved this last night, so I thought I'd get it out again. So we need to think about the wider costs of some promotion activities. So let's have a look. We'll do two of these, I think. On the screen coming up, we've got six different types of promotion activity. Now, don't forget, in Unit 2, you wouldn't pick all six, or you, you might pick one or two of these, maybe one or two of others. Uh, I've just picked out six typical uh, promotional activities that you might get involved with, depending on the product or service. What have we got? We've got exhibiting at a trade show. We've got direct mailing leaflets. We've got getting social media posts made by influencers. We've got my favorite, your favorite, running a prize competition. We've got running advertising on Instagram or TikTok, and we've got email marketing. So six different types of promotional activity. What I want you to do is to spin the spin the wheel. I'm not sure whether I've even got a, a sound effect for this. Uh, wrong one. So let's spin it. <laughs> and let's see where it lands. What do we think? Where's it going to land? Round and round it goes where it lands. Nobody knows, but it has landed on exhibiting at a trade show. So taking your business to an exhibition. So now we've already mentioned it's quite expensive, but can you put in the live chat, please, any ideas for wider costs? We've mentioned the rental of the space, but what are the possible wider costs? What do we think? Let's get some um, answers on the screen here. Hannah's first in there. Fantastic. Travel to the show. Superb. Travel to the show. And in theory, if you, as long as you're not staying there, travel back from the show. Gurbani has also gone for travel costs. So that's good. These are exactly what we are talking about. Wider costs. Uh, Chimney is saying the cost of staff. Yeah, absolutely. The staff to look after the stand, to prepare the stand, to man the stand, maybe to get rid of the stand. The cost of the stand itself. Absolutely. You can rent these things, but typically you have to pay for them. Uh, maybe a sophisticated layout or display units. What do we think? Uh, to Ab Abu Bakr was asking about swap and pestle. We're doing, um, we've done justification in a previous video. We'll mention it again on Monday when we go through the, uh, when we go through the research pack. Uh, yeah, renting the stand, equipment. Oh, some great answers coming here. Cost of products on the stand. Superb, fake. Love that. You've got to have something in the stand. No point having an empty stand. The cost of storage from Alex. This is brilliant. Exactly that. Now, the point about, let's see what I came up with here. Let's just uh, press a couple of buttons. The point about this is that you don't list thousands of wider costs, but make sure in your budget in AF6, you include one or two or three wider costs for your campaign to show that it's not just one number. So it doesn't just say exhibiting at a trade show, £20,000. Try to break it down with you know, three or four different elements like renting the booth, uh, travel and accommodation, the cost of promotional materials, maybe even renting internet connections or whatever. So that's the idea, wider costs. We just want to show the examiner that we've not just thought that there's just one thing that you do. That's really all we're saying. Should we do one more? Yes, Jim, let's do one more. So here we go. So, uh, well, uh, exhibiting at a trade show has disappeared like magic, and we've now got running video ads on YouTube. Let's spin the wheel again. Left me a fortune to hire this uh, sound pad. And it's going to... Ah, okay. That's the first time it's done that. It's completely random, so it's as much fun for you as it is for me. Direct mailing leaflets. Sending leaflets out to uh, to addresses, to households or businesses. What do we think? Wider costs of direct mailing leaflets. Over to you again in the live chat. So not just one number. What kind of things might we include? Uh... Jay, the postage, the stamp costs, the mailing costs, superb. Um, what have we got here? The transportation to deliver the leaflets, yeah, depending on how how and who delivers them. Uh, printing and drop costs, yeah. Uh, Decreal gear, super name. Fulfillment costs, staffing. If you get people to post it for you, maybe an agency or a mailing house, the fulfillment costs. The cost of the paper and the printing. This is good. Any more? What have we got here? Paying the staff to deliver them. Production costs. Yeah, production costs. So with that one, production costs, I might just expand that a little bit and say maybe design and proofreading or copywriting. So that just expands the production costs a little bit further just to make it a little bit more specific to mailing a, uh, a leaflet. Uh, May has gone for design costs there. Uh, Hannah, that's quite an interesting one. That, I don't think I've come up with that one before. 
Uh, but you might be right. Buying a new pair of AirPod Pros to listen to whilst dropping the leaflets off. Can't argue with that. Um, and it is a wider cost. Not one that a lot of people would have thought of. Superb stuff. Love that one. What did I come up with? Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, designing the leaflets, printing them, the postal fees, the mailing list rental. Who are you going to send them to? Do you know which addresses to send them to? Have you got the addresses? If you haven't, where are you going to get the addresses from? You need to buy them from somewhere or rent them from a, a reputable source, hopefully. Uh, fulfillment services. Who actually physically sends and drops the leaflets? Is it the raw mail? Is it uh, a door-to-door -door leaflet dropping service? All kinds of things to consider. Now, again, we're not saying you necessarily do all of these things in your budget, but try to include some of them. That's all we're saying. Where has my mouse gone? Let's see if I can find it. Hang on, I'm just going to see if I can find my... Let's... Oops, there we go. So we've done that one, haven't we? Yeah, we have. <laughs> okay, good stuff. Well, that, that's a couple of revision activities just to get us into this idea of campaign costs. So what we've done, we've said, consider the wider costs, just include one or two, and try to be realistic. Try to, um, you know, be, be have, have realistic costs rather than just making up the numbers. A couple of other things that the Unit 2 examiner has said in recent exam, port, uh, exam reports, they've commented on how students who get lots of marks out of eight, seven or eight, for example, they often uh, outline their campaign budget by showing some calculations. In other words, they don't pluck a number out of the air. They actually try and work something out, two or three multiplications, maybe a, a price times a quantity times a number of times. In other words, there is some there is some thought that's gone behind the numbers that are summarized in the budget, because that's the idea. You're trying to allocate the budget. So with the Creel Gear, we had £20,000 to spend. How much are we going to spend on each of the activities? How are we getting to what that spend is going to be? So calculations are really good. And in fact, that is really, I think, one of the two ways that you can show detail, isn't it? You've, you've made some assumptions using realistic costings. There isn't a right or wrong answer to this. All the examiner is looking for you to do is to justify and explain the costs, the elements that make up your budget. Good stuff. Shall we have a look at a couple of examples just in the last uh, five minutes or so before we uh, finish off on this session? So thank you for all the contributions there on that one. So uh, Decreel Gear, as we said last night, lots of people have had a go at it. A good one. Good case study. Uh, and uh, Decreel Gear is in the house in the live chat. So last night we were talking about the marketing mix and I outlined a couple of campaigns that I was intending to um, undertake in order to support the chosen option. I went with the launch of the loyalty scheme, which I think is option two. And one of the campaigns that I said that we would want to do, one of the promotional campaigns is to run a prize competition. So what I had to go at this morning is just outlining what my budget might be for the prize competition, just to try and illustrate something of what we've covered uh, today. So don't forget yesterday I was saying, basically I want two main promotional activities. You could go with three, but I think two or three is about right because that gives you chances to get a little bit of detail in there, but yeah, not, not too much writing. So I was going to run the prize competition. Now I've got £20,000 to spend. So literally I thought, right, I'm going to spend four or five minutes outlining roughly how I might spend, let's say, ten to £15,000 running competitions for seven months. And here's what I came up with. So hopefully viewable on the screen. If not, uh, download the PowerPoint afterwards. But it, all I'm trying to do here is just to try to show the process. Eight marks. So let's say... You know, you do you do this twice for two promotional activities. The examiner is looking for realism, detail, calculations, justification of how the budget is comprised, but also thinking about the wider costs. So I said a budget of £12,000 to support monthly prize competitions to win vouchers that can be redeemed in the store. So that's, that's what I'm spending, £12,000, win a voucher to spend in the store. Why? to provide incentives to sign up for the loyalty scheme. So I'm justifying this part of the promotional campaign. And I reckon that the total cost is the prize cost to us, to Creel Gear, plus other promotional and wider costs. And I reckon it's about £11,000. Now, so I've then thought, well, how do I break that down? Well, what's the prize cost to us? If we're offering vouchers, let's say it's a £1,000 of vouchers every month, is that the cost to us? Well, 
Not really, because if those vouchers are redeemed for sales in our store, we'll get some sales value. So actually the cost to us is going to be our cost of sales, isn't it? Using a unit three concept. So I'm basically saying, look, uh, if our cost of sales is 40% of revenue, in other words, we make a, a 60% uh, gross profit margin, then actually for every thousand pounds of vouchers, it only really costs us 400 pounds in terms of the decreal gear, the leggings and the hoodies that are being sent out. So what I said was each month, it's seven lots of 400 pounds. In other words, 2,800 pounds. That's the cost to us of um, providing those, uh, those decreal gear garments. Okay, so... That's the prize cost, but let's just think about the wider cost. How are we going to promote these this prize competition? And also, how are we? who is going to write it? Who's going to design it? All that kind of stuff. So what I said is, in addition to, in addition to promoting uh, via our social media accounts, which are free, you know, if you're running a, an Instagram account, if you're running a, a Twitter account, an Insta account, basically it's free. So of course, we're going to be promoting the competitions on there. We'll also run pay-per-click advertising on Facebook and Instagram, which is actually the same platform, with a total budget of £9,800. Okay, well, what? How? what is that? So this is where I thought I could just do some simple calculations here. So Facebook, uh, I'll be looking to get 400 entries per month, people who actually, what Facebook and Instagram would call leads, 400 entries to the competition per month, and I would target to get them at 80p each. And I'd try to get, to, I'd run that for seven months. So that would cost me 2,240 on Insta. I'd, I'd hope I could probably target some better audiences, particularly for my target audience. 750 entries, slightly more expensive. I'd be prepared to pay a bit more for Insta, maybe a pound each, seven months, 5,000 pounds. In other words, add those together. There's the best part of what, almost 8,000 pounds there. However, a little bit more detail, not too much, a little bit more. And I've said wider design and copywriting costs for the campaign via our advertising agency have been agreed with the agency at a thousand pounds for the whole campaign. In other words, saying, look, there will be other stuff to do, but we've agreed a fee, a thousand pounds for these competitions, for the agency to come up with some nice strap lines and some nice imagery and that kind of stuff. In other words, I've just thought about the wider costs. So add it all together, 11,000 quid. There we go. Yeah. That's all it is. And that's it. That's my budget of the 20,000 budget. That is 12,000 pounds spent on my prize competition, which leaves me 8,000 pounds to spend in a similar way on my other activity, which is my brand building video campaign. And I'll find a way of, of allocating that budget. But I thought, yeah, that, that looks about right to me. Uh, it's realistic. It's got some workings. It's justified. It's got some calculations. It's considered the wider costs. I'm only chasing eight marks, so I'm not going to spend, you know, an hour writing about my budget. But that to me is about half of what I need to do. If I do something similar for my brand building campaign, I think I've met the demands of AF6. Whether I get to mark band three or four, it doesn't really matter. I'm, we're not chasing every mark. If we can get six or seven, great. If we get eight, magic. But six or seven is absolutely fine by doing that, if you get the feeling. Okay, so there we go. What do we think? I reckon and that's only half of it. That's only half of the budget. But I reckon something like that for each promotional effort is not bad. Now, so the last bit, AF7, because AF8 is just your presentational style, timescale. Now, this is the one to be careful of. Do not spend forever on timescale. Why not? Because it's four marks. It's not worth spending lots of time chasing an extra mark or two on timescale. If you could go back to marketing mix and add some more justification and detail and, and application, is it? You're always better off spending time on the things that have the biggest marks. Uh, oh, sorry, Hannah's asking, what do we do with the leftover money? I always have a line that says any leftover money in the budget will be reinvested in remarketing. In other words, an email campaign that people have responded. Um, so AF7, the timescale, what do we need to do? Well, we just need to provide an outline of how this these campaigns, these promotional activities will will uh, take place over the timescale. So you're always told the budget. In this case, it was £20,000. And you're told the period for the campaign. We were told 30 weeks, weren't we? Uh, so it's whatever it is. We just need to make sure that we, we explain in some way um, the timescale. Now, 
I just think I just need to be a bit careful with time scale. Uh, I've picked this comment out from the examiners, which I thought was quite interesting. But they said the best pieces of work that achieve four out of four. But remember, four, not eight, not twenty. Four out of four have a time scale that includes start and end dates for all the promotional activities, along with duration and justification for their choices. Really? <laughs> well, great. If you want to spend half an hour chasing four marks with all that kind of level of detail, that's great. But I reckon three out of four ain't bad or two out of four is fine. So all I'm saying is just be careful. Don't waste too much time on time scale. And I reckon something like this would do it. What do you think? I reckon this is okay. Um, so all I've done is I've said, look, there's two parts there's two main promotional activities. And I'd always say two main pro promotional activities. Um, prize competition. And I reckon there's like three or four stages to that. So all I've done is say, right, prepare the materials, update the website, launch and run the competitions, review the effectiveness of the ads. In other words, you know, there's like there's three or four elements to it. I've allocated those activities to, to the months as best I can. And I've put in a rough duration for the number of days. But don't sweat and worry too much about the duration. Just put something in. A little table like this in Word. Duration. Just map your map your, your columns out. Quickly fill out the uh, the sort of the Gantt chart style thing. I've done the same for the video brand building campaign. Um, and then, to be honest with you, I would just leave that and move on. If I've got time, I'd go back and try and improve maybe my justification. AF4 in activity one in that, in that file, or perhaps add a little bit in terms of uh, your commentary on the research AF3. If I had a bit of time at the end of the uh, the exam, I'd maybe go uh, go back to the marketing mix. In fact, that's the first place I go to think, have I done a good job on each of the, the seven Ps? Don't spend time dressing up and trying to make your time scale look fancy because you're not going to get many more marks, are you? If you get two out of four, great. Three. Perfect. Kira's asking, was this an eight-month duration? Well, it's 30 weeks, wasn't it? She's like seven and a half months, isn't it? I think. Is that right? I need to get my math sorted. But anyway, I thought it's like seven months plus a bit. But anyway, I wouldn't worry, to, I wouldn't worry about it too much. So there we go. Um, let's, uh, let's just summarize what we've covered in that session. We've looked at budget. We've looked at time scale, And um, what are the key... The key points from this. Firstly, the budget is worth twice the marks for the time scale. So if you push for time, and you might be, it might be a bit tight for time in activity two, spend time on budget rather than time scale. But hopefully you've got time for both. But the budget is much more important, twice as important because you have to, uh, you have to show how your budget is going to be spent and the workings, the detail for the elements, including the wider costs. So that's uh, that's important to do that as we've done it. Um, uh, Shaheem's asking, does it tell you how long the duration is? Do you have to make it up? Make it up. I mean, you're told the total duration of the campaign, 30 weeks, but the individual durations of the activities, just put something in that you think looks sounds sensible. You don't have to write 100 words about each. Just put a number in. Um, what else have we said? Um, multi activity two typically um, will be roughly half the time, much, much more important to spend the majority of that time on the marketing mix than the budget. You'll get marks for presentation. You'll get marks for a simple time scale, a simple, simple timetable. So, and there's not many more marks you can earn. So much more important to spend the time in activity two on the activities that matter. Okay, what have we got? A couple of questions. We've got a couple of minutes. Uh, Jay's asking, are we provided with costs in part B? Let's just stick that on the screen there. Uh, the answer is uh, you are provided in the research pack with a, a couple of pages of illustrative costs for a sample of different promotional activities. For example, an advertising on TikTok, running a stand at a farmer's market, whatever it is. Use those if you wish, but you don't have to. You can bring your own costs, your own promotional activities into your campaign. Um, uh, oh, this is a, a question about last night, but let's just deal with it. We've been told to do the four Ps. Is that much better to do than the seven Ps? Well, as we said last night, you definitely need to do the four Ps and do them well, and you should make reference to the other three Ps where relevant. 
So for example, if you can include uh, some something about people, something about process or possibly physical environment, great, but it's much more important to focus on, um, and do that if you can, focus on the four Ps. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, what football team do you support? That is a unit two question. Uh, Harrogate Town, because they are by distance the, the best, best football inside uh, in England at the minute. Not necessarily the highest, but yeah, League Two. Uh, lots of great stuff coming in. Uh, Alex asking, do we need to spend, this is a unit two question, do we need to spend every penny in the budget? Uh, no. No, you could, uh, the, the difference between what you say you're going to spend and the budget, you could add a line in and say, contingency for possible overspends. And that's it. That's all it is, isn't it? So don't worry about constantly checking your calculations. Think, oh, I need to find another £20. Don't worry about it. Not worth spending time on that. Just say any difference between our spend and our budget. If it's if it's under, we will uh, hold as a contingency for possible cost overruns. That's all you need to say. Uh, right. I think that is just about it, I think, unless we've got any more questions about AF6 and AF7. So where are we? So uh, thank you. Thanks for that question, Alex, by the way. So uh, we uh, we have the weekend now to put our feet up, maybe do a bit of revision. So that my plan is to uh, is to write a new research pack over the weekend, which we can have a look at together if you can join us next Monday at six o'clock. And all we do, we'll spend an hour just working our way through with the research pack, uh, picking out uh, information about the business. It's like a dry run before you get to do part a uh, next week and um also ask it answer any questions that you've got about the process of sitting unit two as we go that's the plan so if you can join me live on monday that'll be fab spread the word if you've got any mates who want to join us of course like this session and all previous sessions and on monday the sessions will be available as a recording uh, on youtube a round of applause to everybody who's joined in tonight who's used the um live chat for those of you who weren't here that's what i think and i'll look forward to catching you live if you can join me next monday so for now see you later